What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another combo edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast, because this is the NXT Deadline 2023 pay-per-view point predictions and the hot tags of the week for episode number 627, I think, I believe. I think that these guys last week did 626, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm Tony Hi. Mango. Robert E. Feliz is here. <laughs> yeah, how, how you doing, Tony? I am still sick. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I have not had a chance to really relax from unpacking and being away and doing all the things that goes along with that and stuff, but had a couple good experiences. One of them being got to see Rob in person for yes, the first time. Yes, did. I'm very glad I didn't get sick. Yeah, you. Well, yeah, give it a couple of days. <laughs> no, no, no. I, it's been like four days since I've seen you. I'm not sick. Well, that's that's the stick. If you start um, uh, hacking off a uh, lung and you got a uh, phlegm in your throat and all that, then it, it's uh, it's only my fault by proxy. That's the mango experience, you know. Yeah, we all get it sometimes. We all get mango <laughs> no, But it, it was awesome. Did get to see Tony in person for the first time. Also got to see his lovely wife and. I really enjoyed that, and we did not take any pictures, so we could be lying to you right now, but <laughs> we'll take a word for it. It wasn't the first uh, of those two. We also, um, my wife got to meet up with somebody that she met through an online, like uh, a 90 Day Fiance thing, and it was like, oh, yeah, didn't they get a picture? <laughs> it's just like a regular thing, it seems. But uh, that's... Um, you know, that was a highlight for that week. And when we we're going to talk about TV highlights and stuff like this, we're going to talk about hot tags that I didn't get a chance to talk about. We're going to talk about new sets of hot tags. We're going to run down, of course, the NXT deadline type stuff. So here's my current game plan. I think this might be the best way for us to do this. I think we're going to go hot tags first, and then we're going to roll that into the NXT deadline stuff because some of the team, well, let's uh, I'm, look, I'll put it this way. I didn't watch any TV stuff. <laughs> I didn't watch anything this week. I watched a couple clips here and there of some of the shows. I read what happened on them. So I watched last week's content and that of course factors into more of last week's discussion, but I think it's probably easier to do that and kind of merge those topics that way and get some of the other things out of the way rather than to do the NXT deadline stuff and then just bounce around like crazy if you like when we bounce around like crazy, well, go to the dark casts that we do in the past because those things bounce around like nuts. But also keep in mind, not only do we want to know, uh, of course, what you have to say about all the hot tags and stuff and all the NXT talk and all that, but anything in mind. So drop your thoughts in the comments below. Tell us what you're thinking about whatever it is we are talking about here or anything else you want to talk about. Maybe you got a great recipe or something. Maybe you really want to just tell us about it. I don't know, funny looking squirrel you saw or something, <laughs> whatever it is, chat it up there over on YouTube. If you are over there on YouTube, hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Ring that little notification bell as well. That way, you know, when we go live for the post show of NXT deadline, which is not quite technically tomorrow, we're recording this at 1050 at night on Thursday because I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. So that's going to take the time that we normally do with the hot tags. That's why Callum's not here because Callum is definitely asleep at this moment you know. but i would hope so at play. Uh, maybe he's like tossing maybe he had a nightmare uh maybe we can um send him some good night wishes or <laughs> but uh or sing him a lullaby or something uh are there any kind of cowboy lullabies i don't know maybe there is peter right one uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh join button is also there next to subscribe if you want to click on that That'd be awesome because that helps us get the lights on here and also make sure that you got access to that dark cast here, the pick poison tier and all the other things that go along with that. If you did check out the last dark cast, you would see that that was a DC versus Marvel war games edition. Those were really fun to do. I am planning on doing some more of those things. I feel like maybe I could do some kind of King of the ring type tournament with this idea in mind, or maybe do something like a Royal rumble or you know, I don't know. We're going to play around with that in the future. Definitely won't get a chance to do that until 2024 at the very least, but that's because it's already December 7th, and I don't know when the hell we're going to record the AEW and WWE end of the year rewards, so that's another whole thing I have to figure out very soon. I'm feeling the burn, and it's not just because it's the hot tags. 
By but, the time we're done with this, for those that are interested in the superhero stuff, uh, Mary, what is it, Merry Little Batman? Oh, Maybe is that on, coming out today or something? Amazon, it'll, it should come out on the 8th. So maybe by the time we're done with this, it's on something. That might be uh, maybe a fan tracks uh, in the future this weekend or something. I don't know. We'll have to try to sort that out too. We'll have to make graphics for that. And so is this is all the reason why you should donate a couple bucks per month to the, uh, the Patreon or the YouTube channel membership. Cause if I could pay somebody to do the editing for that, right. And Rob would just record that. Then we wouldn't have to worry about anything, but you know, it's marketplaces where you can help out stuff. Also, keep in mind, Redbubble and TeePublic, the stuff is on sale for a little while, so pick some stuff up. I know people have been doing that a little bit here and there, especially for Fanboys Anonymous, which is, uh, you know, it all funnels back to the same thing. So head on over to fanboysanonymous.com. I'm not going to plug everything constantly. I swear, we're already five minutes in. No, this and we just talked about plugs and stuff, but... Sorry, Lars Sullivan. Yeah, too bad. Lars, deal with it. You got more money than I do. Donate to the Patreon. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. I'm sure it does. I'm fucking broke. Especially with all the money they just spent in the past couple days. But let's get into some of these hot tags here. Let's get into something that uh, I, I would have normally done last week, but I didn't because I obviously wasn't around to be able to do it. But the Champs Giving Tournament is over. And this year was the topic of... Uh, who was the best WWE team to never win the WWE tag team titles. And the finals went down to Bret Hart and Owen Hart against Big Cass and Enzo Amore. And with 71% of the votes, Bret and Owen Hart won. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me because they are great. Bret and Owen are great. Um, I still am surprised though. I thought that crime time or Big Cass and Enzo, or maybe even the Bella Twins could have beaten Brett and Owen Hart. I um, I definitely thought the Bella Twins were going to be there, but no, we didn't get anything. Yeah, they had a uh, was it where which round did they get eliminated? They had tied with the Divas of Doom, and they beat Lita and Trish, and they lost to Big Cass and Enzo. That's right. So, if you want to know some more information about like the statistics behind that and stuff if you go and you click on the champs giving tag that's on smartcomeup.com you'll see the most recent post the winner reveal thing so i have like the closest call the biggest landslide the things that surprised me the most and stuff obviously it's not the biggest hot tag in the world but i want to do uh what i want to do <laughs> i wanted it to thank the people that voted for this round and i also want to know what you might want us to do next year for the champs giving tournament so if you have any ideas suggestions questions comments concerns Chip them in out there, toss them to the feedback page or leave a comment or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, I'll keep all that in mind. And who knows next October when I'm trying to figure that out or November or whatever, you know, maybe we'll end up going with your suggestion. So again, thank you to the people who voted and I'm going to do a quick speed round actually of last week's hot tags that I felt like chiming in about because I didn't get a chance to talk about them. So uh, I don't know, set a timer. I'm not giving myself a time limit. Um, <laughs> WWE after the bells ending. I only listened to a few episodes of that. Okay. Uh, the, it's a shame that the po a new day podcast pretty much stopped a long, long time ago. So that sucks. Uh, that was a better one. QT Marshall quitting AEW, I think is very interesting. And it wouldn't shock me if they at least tried to get him a spot as a performance center coach. I don't know if that'll actually work, but Apparently, a lot of this boils down to him really wanting to wrestle. Yeah, then I'll see him in TNA or NWA. Oh, yeah. I would think because I don't think WWE is going to pick hold him on, up. Hold on, <laughs> Dude, we're not going to lie to the good people of Spark Up over here. Will you see him? Will I see him in, in there? I will not see him, but I will see a news report that he is there. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Because so. <laughs> I do not watch those shows. Uh, I do think Camille uh, leaving NWA could very well go to WWE. Yeah, she wants to. And it, I think that that's a better fit for her rather than AEW or TNA or something. Now, if she wants to go to some other place, I'm sure that they would pick her up. But she seems to have a pretty good connection with Nick Aldis still, right? Yeah. 
and I mean, he is obviously in a position of potentially being able to put in a good word and everything. So I want her to go to WWE. I'm hoping that that's the case. And I'm hoping somebody comes back to WWE because I have no fucking clue who sided on this idea of firing Mackenzie Mitchell, the best interviewer that they have. What the hell? <laughs> Michaels also had no idea. He said, on a media call today, he said, I don't know, but everybody loves her. And she was great. And she'll always be welcome there. So hopefully we get her back sooner than later. If I'm Vic and, you know, I'm like, hey, what the hell, guys? Come on. You know, I should be up in uh, the main roster and stuff. And now you just like fired my wife, who is very clearly the best at this job and all. For real. Like, I don't know their thought process. I don't know if it's a matter of like somebody clicked the wrong button or like she can't possibly make the most out of the interviewers. I would think that that would be Kayla at this point. So it can't just be like, well, we don't have, we don't need that many interviewers. So let's just get rid of one of them. And she's the one that makes the most amount of money. The second most. And are they like, Hey, Hmm. we got Quinn McKay over here and she's doing it for pennies on the dollar. Maybe that's the case. I think it's dumb. I think there are people that don't do the job as well that she could be doing a much better job doing. And I, I hope that something happens where they just kind of, you know, give her the job back or if she wants it too, she might end up being like, you know what? No, that pisses me off. And now I want to go elsewhere and power to her. If that's the case, cause she's fucking great at her job. And I, I wouldn't even want to see her go to AEW because I don't think that that would be a good use yeah, for man, her. They got the, they have the legit best in the business. They have her neck. Honestly, I I think I'd pick Mackenzie right now over Renee. I think Renee is good at what she does. I think Mackenzie was right there. But Renee is so good. Renee's in the spot. Like she's not leaving. They've got Renee, they've got Shivani, they've got Yeah. People. They got like yeah. Lexi and uh Dasha and them to like, you know, do like they some of the other Alex things. Scoops. And uh, RJ City do, does does some of that RJ stuff. Is so good. So it's He's like they they don't need McKenzie. McKenzie should just go to like I don't know ESPN or something like that. You know what I mean? Like she's better than that. But I hope that they just bring her back. I hope they bring her up to the main roster. I hope that they have fun with it. But well, I'm basically say, putting it out story. there is just like that that that's stupid that she got fired because it's really stupid. Here's a fun story about that. I had completely wiped from my memory that this woman worked for Impact. Right, yeah. She apparently worked there for like three years. I was hired directly by Dixie and all that. And I go, well, I'm going to look this up. So, of course, the first thing I see is an article called, written by me in 2019 <laughs> saying that she had been let go by Impact on e-wrestling news. And I'm like, hey, that, that's appropriate. <laughs> so much information just goes in and out. You know what's really annoying? When I try to look up like statistics of something, like uh, the other day I was looking up something about like Elimination Chamber records or something, and I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll make an article out of this. But let me see if anybody's done any of the legwork. And I fucking did. Yeah, you realize you're, you're the one that did the legwork? <laughs> it was the thing from like three years ago on Bleacher Report, and I was just kind of like, oh, Okay, well, not only did I already write up basically the same damn post, but I already did most of the work and forgot about it already. <laughs> and I'm like, good job, Past Tony. How do you You're know? fucking killing it. You got paid 50 bucks for that one. <laughs> damn right he did. <laughs> Shame I can't get paid another extra 50 by writing the same thing again, but hey, that's not me. Um, what are some of these other ones from last week? Uh, Drake Maverick had trademarked the baby Jesus of pro wrestling. I wrote that down. That's hysterical. I don't know what that's for, but he understands his role. He's tiny. He's the baby Jesus of pro wrestling, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I love that. <laughs> um. Oh, I hadn't had a chance to talk about Ric Flair tweeting about how I could just fucking leave if I'm an embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. Which let's combine that with this one about Britt Baker tweeting that she had zero. Uh, promo time and the thing about Brian Danielson being the head of a committee that 
fired CM Punk, but not really, but also being responsible for fining people if they bitch about their stuff on Twitter. So, okay. <laughs> That's not, at least that last part isn't entirely accurate. He's, he's uh, got a disciplinarian role and has issued fines for social media behavior. We don't know if it's for bitching on Twitter. For <laughs> Quit your like bitching fine. <laughs> It could be for some Thurston comments. I don't know. Who knows? You know, like for you Thurston for a fine. <laughs> I I think it's hysterical that Brian Nielsen dude, Brian Nielsen hates social media, so putting him in charge of like, hey, you could dish out fines for what you deem inappropriate social media behavior, I think is funny. I had seen someone say it's Super funny that he's become the authority. <laughs> um, what did what did you think about that stuff? Cause I know that blew up at first when it was announced that he was on the committee that let go of Punk. I assumed that he was brought into there as somebody who would be like, "Okay, you're one of the boys, and you can give us a perspective like that." Which, However, like, we also know that Tony Khan has said. Hey, if I get run over by a bus, mm-hmm. you hand over the keys. To, yeah, Brian Danielson. So it seems like he's just becoming his guy Friday. And at this point, the more power that he gets, the less surprised I'm going to be. Yeah, and I'm good with it because he seems to really care about AEW. And it's not like he hadn't already tried to do things before. Like, I mean, Evolve. He was doing you know? it, right? Like, yeah, well, he, was doing, he did start Evolve. He was. Uh, this, because COVID and shit happened, but like he's the guy that pushed Big E on SmackDown. He was on the SmackDown creative team and he pushed Big E. Yeah, so it's not something like he's completely uh, unaware of doing those kind of jobs. So I don't know. He might be setting himself up for his go to future, you know? Yeah. I do think that the Ric Flair thing is funny because it's just like, well, that didn't take long. <laughs> I don't. So, like, we're a week removed now. But when that promo got out and they did cut the footage, that where he did the whole, and girls, between the, 18, between the ages of 18 and 28, don't want to find out where you stand. Here's our hotel or whatever. People, of course, jump to the plane ride from hell stuff where it's like, hey, can you not, you know, you were like accused of sexual assault. Can you not invite 18 year olds to your hotel room? Also, you're 74 years old. Can you not invite 18 year olds to your hotel room? I just thought of it like. Also, this is uh, Sting's retirement. Can you not be cutting promos about that? (laughs) Like, the, the problem is. Everyone around him enables it because they're just like, there he is. Look at him being age. Look, eh, look, he did the thing. He did. Look, he did it. You know, it's like they're like nature boy going to nature. And you're like, OK, you're making an, uh, a whole series of excuses for somebody. And it, yeah, it, yes. Because that's the way it's viewed now. And I understand that it wasn't the way it was viewed back then. Nobody understands that mentality sometimes more than we do but you gotta stop them and i equated it to this because i saw a lot of people being like you know nobody cares that you look at him like your grandpa and that you have such fond memories and it's like look i don't know if you've ever had to do this tony but i have definitely had to and i'm sorry to anyone if i've repeated this from last week but i've definitely had to take my loved ones aside and be like hey you need to stop that shit. Like, hey, times have changed. You're being offensive. And yeah, if like, you... you cannot do that. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've had those conversations. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's a conversation that you have to have, especially if you care about somebody, you can't let them go around being, you know, offensive for the sake of it. Got, oh, look at grandpa. being get offensive. Yeah. Look at grandpa who uh, fought in world war two and now has these like prejudices. And you're like, <laughs> Hey, let's not 
consider a whole group of people the enemy anymore, <laughs> or something like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like you can't do that. Someone needs to just take Ric Flair and be like, "Hey, we love you. Please stop." Because I saw a lot of people when he figured this thing out, be like, "Oh, this is emotional manipulation one on one." And yes, it is. But also, we know that Ric Flair is a genuine like dealt with undiagnosed depressions and things of that nature and probably started crying immediately being like, hey, what do you mean they don't like me, but I'm Nate, you know, like, cause that's the way he sees himself. Yeah. I, I hate think, it. You know, like I think it's, you gotta sit him down and be like enough is enough. So those are like some hot tags from last week oh, that I just kind of uh, wanted and, to. And uh, Brit didn't touch on Brit. Oh, Brit, yeah. Um, she, you know, the women's division sucks. So why hasn't she had any um <laughs> promo time in an entire fucking year? That's crazy. I that's one of those things where I think I had said this to Callum last week. You're always talking about how like you're over Brit versus Sheeta versus Hater, but mm-hmm. and I'm like, if you when you think about that, if you told me. She hasn't got a promo all year. I'd be like, there's no way you're right. But actually, yeah, she hasn't cut a single promo. Yeah. And it's like, they just keep doing the matches and they don't do anything to make anything worthwhile. It's just like, well, those people are feuding. Okay. Why should I care? Oh, well, don't you like them? I mean, less than I used to (laughs) now, like, you know, yeah, like you're the top person. Why are you having you cut a promo at all this year? That's stupid. That's a prime example of why AEW's women's division is not as good as it could be. All the more reason why somebody like a Jade Cargill made the right decision, I think, and why Camille should go over to WWE, and why Mackenzie Mitchell shouldn't have been fired. It's unrelated, but it still should be a thing. <laughs> so I mentioned trademarks. Um, Baby Jesus is a pro wrestling. Uh, it's another trademark. Or at least a couple of other trademarks, actually. We can lump these all together. Jack Perry filed trademarks for his two names, Jack Perry and uh, Jungle Boy. Not just Jack and Perry. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know if that means that maybe he's like just kind of re-upping stuff or if maybe he's considering leaving. Um, I'm going to say re-upping and just making sure he owns certain elements of the character. I don't think he'll leave. Or be forced Personally. out. I think if he was going to be forced out, we'd have heard about it by now. Maybe. Or maybe they would just be like, well, let's wait until his contract expires and do that kind of thing. Which, whenever that is, I don't know, it's probably not for a while. But There are new ring names for NXT superstars. And two of them are in the NXT breakout tournament. So... It's worth potentially combining these topics and stuff, but also they signed 14 new next in line athletes. These are people that we don't know. And I don't think that we have anything to say about them. Right. It's like, you know, ah, yeah. Skylar Schultz. I I want to know why one of them wasn't Maya Lesnar. who Fucking set a shock put record who looks like she could manhandle half the men's roster of WWE. They, They need to sign. This girl looks amazing. And, like, they should just try and get her if she ever shows the slightest interest in wrestling. Uh, They absolutely should if she does. Yeah. Because if she said anything like her father, she would just, like, blow through the competition. And, I mean, the fact that she's doing that in shot put and stuff is, like, all right, she's an athlete for sure. So, somebody to watch out for for sure. All these other people, you know, football star, track and field, whatever. The next in line thing has basically been we're going to sign athletes and then you're never going to fucking hear about them again. So maybe somebody like the Bailey Humphrey girl or the Lucas Davidson guy or whatever. Maybe one of them ends up actually graduating into a, a superstar. But it's happened like three times out of like 50 people. Well, no, it's happening more now. Basically, this whole uh, like the Cavender twins haven't done anything, you know. Like, what we're gonna see them in a 
another Chase U segment. <laughs> you could. Hey, they have gambling problems <laughs> in Chase U. It, that's the thing that, like, I mean, I haven't really been paying a whole lot of attention, of course, from, like I said, this week I didn't see almost anything. I, I read what happened. I uh, watched a couple of YouTube clips and all, but, like, this seems like such a stupid story. I don't like it. <laughs> um, let's wait to talk about the uh, breakout tournament until we get into the NXT stuff because we'll love that in the yeah, too. I, and I'll get back to the uh, the Chase U stuff too. So trademark wise, WWE is having issues with the Yeet catchphrase. Yeet. I'm so mad about that. <laughs> I'm wondering what the problem is. Another wrestler already trademarked Yeet. Really? Yep. Well, pay the man and uh, pay you the make man your money. And if now, if that person's like, all right, I want $486 million. Let the man say Yeet, by the way. Like, first of all, it's a word that was popular like 10 years ago. Right. Second of all, it's super over. Just let him say Yeet. Like, it's so stupid that, oh, we're not going to let him say it anymore. We're going to move away from it because we can trademark it. Which, by the way, if you want me to create some Yeet merchandise, Redbubble will be public. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty shameless. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't have any trademarks for any of that kind of stuff, but I'll put Yeet 316 up on there and get that taken down after a couple weeks and sell a t-shirt or two. Go along with my uh, welcome to Pound Town stuff and my um, uh, I don't know my Star Wars things. <laughs> it's, yeah, you know. so you're gonna cut yourself off at Welcome to Pound Town. Uh, it's one of the better selling ones. I wonder why. Oh, uh, you know the the thing that sells the most out of everything is the fourteen million six hundred and five is less than one from the uh, just a reference for Avengers Infinity War. I believe that. And it's just, people keep buying stickers for that. So it's like maybe like once a week I, I make like 25 cents on a sticker or something. And it's just like keeps happening. And I'm like, hey, can you buy like, a, I don't know, all the other kind of options? <laughs> buy some hats, buy some aprons, things that I make a little bit more money on there, you know, the mugs or whatever. But now we're in uh, the holiday season. So now people are buying like... um a couple things like that are like a somebody bought an apron the other day of one of the star Wars things and like a hat or something. So I was like, ah, oh, wow. I made like eight bucks or something, but um, yeah, pick us up uh, stuff. If you want it, everybody it's out there. So the subscriber thing, let's talk about this. Uh, both AEW plus and impact plus slash TNA plus all the pluses except for Disney plus screw that one. The changes for AEW Plus, Plus, uh, yeah, they they keep uploading, uh, upping their prices. Screw all those things. What's a Paramount Plus and something's going to merge now? They felt Apple and I did send that to you, right? Like, uh, yeah, they're going to merge and and they're just going to be cable. Those uh, those CEOs were feeling a a certain urge. So the AEW plus thing, I wrote down some of the, the, like the fact that this was like the hot tag and stuff, but I'm trying to double back and like actually reread the article. Cause I don't remember the details. They're upping the price of course, cause it's always upping the price. It's never whatever, but it's like enhanced membership benefit for an extra amount of money. We're going to blah, 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 blah. Is this something that you're interested in or is this something that you're like, well, nah, well, yeah, I'm pretty interested because specifically with TNA. No, I'm talking about the AEW one. The TNA one sounds like a much better deal. Oh, I mean, with the AEW stuff, it's a uh, subscribers I, on fight, and it's a geo targeted pricing system closure, thing. I do pay the six dollars because I like watching my shit without commercials. That's the whole reason why I subscribe to anything. Which is why it's maddening that everyone wants to add ads. Mm-hmm. Which just makes people want to not subscribe anymore. Right. Uh, but 
Yeah, it's it's no skin off my nose. I said it right that time. <laughs> it's uh let's see, what's the difference between this? Exclusive twenty percent discount on pay per views, exclusive access to pay per view bundling offers, uh bundle offerings, that's the phrase I should say. Uh, the super successful four pay-per-view bundle that everyone was able to get in 2023 to enjoy the biggest pay-per-views at a discounted price will now be available to AEW Plus subscribers only. 20% discounts on the merchandise shop, priority purchase access for tickets to AEW All in London. They are trying so fucking hard. Yeah, they're, they, they are just like, can you please make the same, if not and, more, money on AEW doing London? they perfectly fine, by the way. They've already sold, like... 40,000 seats. And they're just like... Callum already got his seats. They're panicking. I don't know. Like... Don't they got understand. this uh, on-demand access to select historical AEW pay-per-view, so not all of them. And then this geo-targeting subscription thing where it's like, it says a 20% increase or decrease based off of where you live and whatever, which I'm assuming mostly is an increase. But... I'm not a subscriber and none of this is going to make me subscribe. So they're not getting any money out of me on that one. Yeah. You would never turn on your VPN and go through all that. (laughs) Now the TNA thing, I'm also not going to subscribe to, but it sounds like it's a much better deal. What's going on with that? It is a much better deal because yes, the monthly subscription fee is going up from $7.99 to $9.99. But if you go with the annual subscription and pay the ninety five ninety nine a year, going up from seventy two, you get apparently the pay per view events bundled into all of this. So if I can save money, then yes, I'm absolutely going to start doing this and stop buying pay per views individually. Took you long enough. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So that's something to be paying attention to, especially if you, I mean, obviously, if you are a TNA fan, then you got to pay attention to it. If you're not, then you're saying, no, I'm not going to fucking do it anyway. So, no. Haha, uh, nuts to you. I mean, well, since you mentioned TNA, let me uh, throw this one out there. Okada is coming back to TNA, which is huge news. Not only because he's Okada, but John Ross have reported that he will be a free agent in January. But also, Okada hates TNA. He hated TNA. He was there from like 2010 and 2011. He, they, you know, he had a shitty TNA run. Like, he was just a random guy on their explosion show. He was never really featured prominently. This was so bad that it soured the relationship between New Japan and Impact for a decade. Now he's coming back to CNA. And I think that's cool because it's like, man, anything is possible in wrestling. Everybody should just shut up. Like, this seems like another one of those stories of this year where it's just sort of like, there's a crazy crossover happening. We're going to look back in like two years and be like, wow, this is how it all ended. Yep. And I can't wait. Hmm. Not well, that I'm of, I want it to end, but I, I, I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. Like, just watching history unfold. Speaking of things ending, though, it seems like that's going to happen to the house shows. It's like I, uh, time's ticking on that, because T-K-O-C-O-O. Say that ten times too fast. Mark Shapiro. Oh, my God. T-K-O-C-O-O, <laughs> Mark Shapiro. Uh, yeah, he. C-O-O, Mark Shapiro. <laughs> He was talking about basically the thing that everybody would have assumed is the case where he's like, yeah, house shows don't make shit. This is like, obviously, this isn't exactly how he said it, but this is the uh, the translation of corporate speak. Those things don't make shit, and we want to make as much money as we possibly can, so we are cutting everything we possibly can that doesn't make money. You're going to see less house shows. Screw you and your little, uh, your little arena markets. It's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, so... <laughs> I actually have a lot to say about this because I think this is a double edged sword because on the one ha- on the one side of things you got, Hey, 
this is enticing to talent like CM Punk. You know? You can just... We're just doing the big shows. On the other side of it, it sucks if you're Ava Rain. I don't know why I used her as an example. Uh, it sucks if you're Casey Catanzaro, who like needs the house show circuit to get reps so you can be better at your job. This is great if you're Kofi Kingston because this adds even more longevity to your insanely long career. This is terrible if you're Kofi Kingston and you like goofing around on house shows Mm -hmm. and trying things out. Now, from a fan perspective, and I want to kind of lump this in with other, like, international PLEs. Oh, I said PLE. Sorry. Um, Ew. Yeah. Ew, it's working on you. (laughs) I I, I have had to hear it more, so I guess that it is working. Um, Boo this man. I feel bad if you live in, like, Utah or or Wyoming. Yeah. Or any, like, non, quote-unquote, major market because some kids, like, look forward to their one house show in, you know. Bumblefuck, Shan- Iowa or Shannon, something. Shannon, Wyoming or whatever the fuck. Like, sorry to the people in Cheyenne, Wyoming, but. Yeah, you know, you know, what, you know what's up. <laughs> like, it sucks. That they might just eliminate that altogether. I don't know how I feel about that. I could see them playing around with some different ideas and being like, all right, well, let's take a couple of these smaller markets and in 2024 up the price to like some stupid amount and see what we can get away with. Wouldn't shock me if they have like little test things like that and just be like, okay, well, if we want to make money off of this, we have to make a certain amount of money per travel. And these little markets are good for like building up the name recognition, but we're WWE. We already have enough from name recognition. It's not like you're really going to be getting anybody that's like, you know, yeah, I'm thinking about being a WWE fan, but at the same time, they didn't come to my section of Nebraska. And in like, if they went to a house show, then I would spend the money and then I would become a fan. It's much easier to just flip on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, but I think you're losing something. Yeah, yeah you are, because I mean there's nothing like watching a live show. House shows are special, man. Cause here's the thing. When you thing. go to <laughs> when you go to the Royal Rumble, even if it's a great show you inevitably end up with the feeling of, I got to watch this again on TV. Mm -hmm. Because it's made for TV. I don't don't know. I I really feel weird about the uh, potential that we might not have house shows anymore. I still think WWE missed out on an opportunity back with the WWE Network. I've been saying for the longest oh, don't, time. Don't get me started, please. They, they should have just fucking recorded the house they shows. They should have fucking streamed the house shows. And they should have called it in your house. And they could have just made it a series. And you set up one fucking camera. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, crazy. We have like eight cameramen and we're doing all these crazy things. Because I'm sure that they record these things anyway. For like posterity reasons, and in case like a you know an injury happens or a big event or something like that, they're recording them anyway. Broadcast them on there, even if you don't broadcast them live. If you just like upload them the next day or something, and then let people watch the house shows, and some people would have been watching that shit. And you know what? Maybe it wouldn't have gotten you much money. The amount of money that you would have spent on somebody just doing a quick edit and uploading it, especially if you wanted to make it a real rough cut, that could be in and of itself something that was kind of fun is that it wouldn't have the same editing as what the other stuff would be. And you fucking slap a, you know, commercial deal on that. You make some money off of that. You say like, hey, look, uh, I'm going to get a promotional deal with, uh, I don't know, um, Snickers. 
we're going to be advertising you on our house shows. Not only will the people that are in the house shows get this, like, you know, the Snickers advertisement on the little, um, what's it called? It's not Playbill um, program. You'll have a little Snickers logo on there and stuff, but also we'll mention it. You know, Byron Saxton will be like, remember everybody, this episode or, uh, in your house is sponsored by you. Snickers. Eat a Snickers, you hungry bastard, or whatever their fucking catchphrase is. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, Eat a Snickers, you hungry bastard. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever the fucking thing is, you know. Hey, you're fat. Eat one of these. Oh <laughs> like, <you know>? God, no. <laughs> and then, uh, when they put them out on the network, it, you know, it's part of the deal that they have where it ends up being like, okay, as part of your sponsorship deal, anybody that watches this is essentially getting commercials. You're paying to be uploaded onto our network and to have that for posterity. That probably would have made them more money. And for some reason, that's not something that was either brought up and executed, or maybe there's a reason why that I'm unaware of. But I think that losing house shows entirely is bad. Cutting down on them can make sense. But yeah, I also I just, though. I think that everybody's, you know, they the whole part in. Uh, they only do Saturday and Sunday now. Right. Yeah. The Saturday, uh, Saturday night's main event and Sunday stunner. And part of me is just sort of like the whole part in Goldeneye where uh, Bond refers to the new M as a a numbers person and she, she's just a bean counter and it's like i don't know i kind of want the world to burn i kind of want everybody in these corporations that just goes numbers 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 to like get bonked on the head and like forget that you know <laughs> you know economy's collapsing everybody we ought to oh nut yeah, the fuck well, up I mean, and <laughs> nobody wants to talk about it but it is yeah Things are so, terrible. When it uh when it collapses even more in a year, Tony told you so. Right. That's why you come to smart up for your financial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Go to the guy that always is begging you to give him money because he doesn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can be your financial doom clock. I'm okay with that. Every time Calum's out on this show, it goes way off the fucking rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is at, at the end of the day, donate to the Patreon. <laughs> there you go. So, I didn't watch the TV for this week. I already mentioned that. I have nothing to say about anything that happened. It all sounded either run-of-the-mill or stupid. <laughs> or oh, both. I was going to invite Tony to watch Raw with me. And yeah, because Monday I, was when we popped over to your place. Yeah, and then I realized, like... You would have a two-hour commute on top of a three-hour show, and it was like, yeah, I can't, that can't happen. I ended up having a much better viewing experience of, instead of watching Raw, I went to see Godzilla Minus One, and the movie was fucking awesome. I want to watch Godzilla. I recommend it. It's, uh, it's legitimately, like, one of the better movies that I've seen this year, which is odd to say about a Godzilla movie, but I was like... Oh shit, this is pretty good. <laughs> Bar is low, huh, bud? I mean, uh, let me bring up my my notes. Uh, which, by the way, for everybody, one of the other things that's happening towards the end of the year is my usual fanboys uh, film awards, where I say what was good and bad and all this year. So, currently in the running for best movies that I've seen this year that came out this year, Spider-Verse, Godzilla, Guardians, they cloned Tyrone and Oppenheimer would be wow, like the top five. To Barbie. Um, yeah, Barbie would be in the top 10 along with like Indiana Jones and Super Mario. Mario was really good. I think I saw that the most because I watched it like five times when it came out. Um, Spider-Verse is probably my favorite. That's probably going to end up getting my uh, my favorite movie of the year. I think 65 came out last year, but I watched that this year. Yeah, it came out this year. Really? Yeah, I watched that. Was it, it, was, uh, it was interesting. 
And then if anybody's um, wondering, with the probably the worst movie that I've seen this year that came out this year was probably the Meg Two. Oh wait, no, no, that actually wasn't. that little looking at this list because uh, Pope's Exorcist came out this year, and that was really bad. How can um, you forget that the, the whole Hell in a Cell match of Mania? Yeah, built around that. And of course, I've seen a lot of other movies this year that didn't come out this year. Uh, I've been doing my um, my Power whole Rangers Turbo, yeah, Power Rangers Turbo. Garbage. If you want to check that out, that Family was, Synonymous on there. That was so bad. I've been watching uh, a big amount. Most of the movies that I've seen this year are movies like uh, like Roadhouse, Roadhouse. and uh, you know Under Siege and shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to watch tomorrow, but I'm going to just veg out and watch some kind of dumb Van Damme film or something. But yeah, Have Godzilla seen, uh, it was pretty good. Ferris Bueller. Still haven't watched Ferris Bueller. That'd be a fun budget out. I mean, if you're looking for an action flick, you've seen Bloodsport. Yeah, that that was one of them from this year. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. There's a there's a whole list of like Big Trouble in Little China that I watched this year, and uh, the Beverly Hills Cop movies, and all um, Dark Man, Escape from L.A., Escape from New York, all that. If you want more about that information, go to fanboysanonymous.com. You'll be seeing some more stuff about, like, hey, kickboxers fucking funny as all hell. <laughs> Look, it's not 80s, but watch Kill Bill. I don't care if you watch it. Watch it again. And Kill Bill's good. Love Kill Bill. Not as good as Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, but Kill Bill's way, 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 way higher up on my Tarantino list than anything he's been doing in the past bunch of years. That's for sure. But yeah, anything TV-wise you feel like talking about? Um, yes, there's, there's some things because on Raw, they had Shinsuke reveal why he attacked Cody. And the answer was, I've been where you've been. I felt your pain. I also won the Royal Rumble, thought I was hot shit and then lost to AJ Styles. I want to help. We're the same, Cody. I just want to help you. I was like, you know what? That's better than anything I could have imagined they would do. Um, our truth thinks he's a member of Judgment Day. Yeah, I like is, that they've been doing that. He's like, all right, I'll leave, I'll leave my clubhouse, but we need to get better security. Um, let's see. Drew McIntyre. He's got the worst storyline going on right now. I say this in the sense of... I hate the story. I hate it in wrestling. I hate it in comics. I don't like the story of absolutely justified man is telling you why he's angry, but he's a jerk now, so he's wrong. Yeah. I hate that story. Hence why Magneto's not a villain. <laughs> Drew McIntyre comes out and he's like, hey. It sucks that people keep screwing me over. I keep getting screwed over. Jay Uso screwed everyone over and everybody loves him now. Mm-hmm. I beat Jay Uso and Seth Rollins gives him a title shot. Oh, by the way, I guess we could just come back to this company after talking a bunch of crap and be welcome. Uh, Welcome to the open arms. You know, it's like, I'm like shit. He, like he went to, he said the same thing. He's like, no, of everybody that got screwed over by the bloodline, you deserved it the most. And they brought this one back around. You'll love this. He said, the only reason you were even linked up with them is because you were running away from me. <laughs> and you did all these horrible things. And now people are supposed to feel bad for you. And then he beat up Sami Zayn. He beat up uh, Seth and Jay later in the night. But, like, I hate that story. Because he's right. Why are we booing him? Because he's mean man now. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just I don't like that that mindset. I saw um, that uh, Nia Jax screwed up, like, some moves, which is like, all right, that's not news. He screwed up the stink <laughs> face. How do you... Ah. <laughs> Because she stinks. I saw, I saw that on Twitter <laughs> afterwards, and I was like, Naya, can you couldn't at least confirm that her head was behind you? Um, <laughs> I, 
not crazy about Nia and Becky being the feud going into the women's rumble match, but it's like, I get it. It makes sense that they would do it because it's like, it's not really like a feud feud to waste your time on, but they can have like a moment in the Royal rumble. So somebody pitched this on Twitter. I just want to get your thoughts on it. The four horsewomen against damage control, the remaining members of damage control at WrestleMania. And then Bianca versus Cargo, I guess. And then Bianca versus... No, it was Bianca versus Rhea that this person had pitched. I forgot who you were, sorry. So then... Wait, so then what would be the title matches? Bianca, Rhea... Be Bianca and... and Rhea for the one title. And then I guess the other title would be online because damage control would be wrestling. Uh, then I wouldn't like it. I'd rather it be. Oh, then I don't know who Rhea would end up fighting, because who would be left for Rhea? Mm. I wouldn't be opposed to the four horsewomen against Damage Control. I think that could be kind of fun. I'd be mad. And then Cargill, I think, against Bianca would be the other match for like the SmackDown title. But then it's like who would be up against Rhea? Naya, just fucking let Rhea rip tied her. That's the moment. Rhea's baby face. Looking at the breakdown of who they have, I don't know if they have anybody that... Uh, they would probably have to go multi-woman, and it would still be, like, a kind of a waste. Because they already did most of the women, too. They already did the whole, like, Zoe and Shayna and Nia and, you know, yeah, so... Like absolutely going to be um, Becky, Rhea... Yeah, it's gonna if be. Somebody brought that up, and I was like, "Okay, I'll I, I'll hear that out." Um, gonna skip NXT for now because we're gonna come back to it. Let's talk about AEW very quickly. We had more action in the Gold League this week on Dynamite. John Moxley beat Roosh. Uh, Roosh was very upset about this. Wants a no DQ match with Moxley for it. Moxley's got nine points. Sort of Strickland's got nine points because he defeated Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe was mathematically eliminated from winning the tournament. Uh huh. <laughs> Jay Lethal lost to Jay White. Jay Lethal's also mathematically eliminated. Uh huh. Briscoe, I mean, Briscoe, Strickland and Moxley will fight next week. Presumably, the winner of that has to win the tournament. Or at least that side, you would assume, right? Yeah, I mean, that side. Uh, over on the other side, we've got... Um, actually, we have collision spoilers. I guess I should read those off for you. Spoiler, spoiler, wah, wah, wah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I mean, yes. Spoiler, spoiler, wah, 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 indeed. Um, <laughs> the wah, 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 for, the, for anybody's wondering, it's supposed to be like an alarm. <laughs> Oh, wee I, thought wee you, wee wee. I thought, yeah, that's more of an alarm. I thought you were like making fun of people crying about spoilers. Um, oh, that works too. Yeah, you're like, spoiler, spoiler, wah, wah, wah. Spoiler, spoiler, bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> All right, real quick for Saturday's collision. In the Blue League, Eddie Kingston is on the board because he defeats Claudio Castagnoli. Kenny Omega defeated Ethan Page. He gets attacked by Big Bill after the match. Wardlow defeats Willie Mack. Willow Nightingale defeats Mercedes Martinez after the match. Mercedes and Diamante attack Nightingale, but Statlander makes the save. Penta and Comandar beat 2.0. And in the Blue League, Andrade El Idolo defeats Brian Danielson. And then there was like an injury scare, right? There is an injury scare. Now, that was taped... Tuesday, oh, I think. That was taped on Tuesday, yes. Thank you. And now, if we go to the uh, Rampage spoilers, and I'll, I'll come back around to Dynamite real quick. I just want to get the tournament talk out of the way. Um, Danielson is in action against Garcia. He defeats Garcia. So by the end of Saturday, he should have six points with two wins and, and one loss. Um, also on Rampage, Orange Cassidy defeats Angelico. Abaddon defeats Trishadora. 
So they're really going with Avedon. I love to see it. <coughs> Avedon was there for a long time. Uh, Hobbs and Konosuke defeat Seidel and Chris Daniels. Dan Housen defeats Rentico. Uh, Hager, Menard, Parker, Andretti, Darius, and Dante. What? Defeat the Dark Order, <laughs> Kip Sabian, the Butcher, and the Blade. That's Okay, color me intrigued. Um, all right, so back to dynamite stuff. Um, we got Edge versus Christian or Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage. Belt stays where it is. Yep. Shane Wayne hit Adam in the face with the title. It wasn't a full heel turn, but you know, probably headed that way. Uh MJF and Samojo were supposed to fight the devil's goons. But instead, MJF was just laid out backstage. No unmasking, no nothing. I kind of was let down by that. There was also the return of Riho, who uh, went after Tony Storm after Storm defeated Sky Blue. And I don't see anything on that. Let's see. And no, I, I think that was the bulk of Dynamite. And if I missed anything, Callum will yell at me later. <laughs> All right, so back to NXT. Then we're going to round things out with the NXT uh, talk. The breakout tournament for the men is going to be happening. And these are the names, which the name that I expected <laughs> was going to win this is not on there. That's so, okay, because he's on the fucking pay per view already. <laughs> apparently, he's on the pay per view, yeah. So it's going to be Riley Osborne, who I know nothing about. Keanu Carver. <coughs> Remember, I told you I was sick. <coughs> I'm so glad I did not get sick. Uh, Keanu Carver is in this tournament. Lucas <coughs> Crucifino is in this tournament. And Keanu Carver is a new name for... What's it? Kevin something? Oh, yeah. I know that somebody had, had uh, said who it was. I didn't look because I wouldn't know who it was regardless. I think it's like we Kevin got, Robertson was his name or something. We got Tavion Heights. We got Miles Bourne. We've got Dion Lennox. That's a new name. That is uh, Andre Murray, I think it's his name. We Ugh. got Trey Bearhill, who is absolutely going to end up getting paired with Eddie Thorpe. Eddie Thorpe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we got Oba Femi. Now, the interesting thing about Oba Femi is that he was teased as coming soon when they were running the OTM vignettes. And they just didn't show him. Now, I don't know a damn thing about any of these individuals except for Miles Bourne. Because he's been paired up with uh, <coughs> Drew Gulak and company. Luca yeah. was like the lawyer that got thrown through a table by Von Wagner. Yeah, for like one week. Tavion Heights is... He's popped up on Level Up, but I don't watch it. They've all popped up on Level Up. They, they were all popping up on Level Up a year ago. Most of these names. Um, Riley Osborne's an interesting one. Because he had some experience in NXT UK. And more importantly, <clears throat> he was in the Chase U segment. And Thea Hale has the hots for him. Did that happen this week? Yeah. So that's something I missed out on. Hmm. Yeah, they did. They ran a, a, a Chase U pep rally vignette or whatever, or assembly vignette, where Chase U, uh, Andre Chase is like, I owe hundreds of thousands in debt. And they're all like, how can we help you? Oh, we can bake cookies. We can do a cookie sale. And Riley Osborne stands up and says something. And Thea Hale just looks at him and is mesmerized. And I'm like, okay, that's... They're really just dedicated to this. CW Thea stuff. <laughs> Thea Hale becomes woman thing that they've been doing. Um, I love this angle, Tony. I love this Chase U gambling issue. You know why? Because it's ridiculous. <laughs> no. <laughs> Duke Hudson was a poker player. <laughs> who has issues controlling his money. 
It's gonna be so fucked up. It's gonna be Duke Hudson <coughs> while Andre Chase was away. He was just gambling his money. And Andre Chase is saying he's responsible because he allowed Duke to do this. That's what I would do. That's what, that's what I should be on the writing staff for NXT, you know? If they do that and they get people to remember that he used to be the gambler, that would be so funny. Like, that's that's what I would do with it. Um, let's see what else happened on NXT. You know, we had the Iron Survivor Challenge matches, or the last chance qualifiers. Uh, Roxanne and Keanu James do not like each other. They just don't. And Fallon Henley got the win, like I predicted. And she's now going to go to the Iron Survivor. I can't remember if she was in last year's. But if she is, she's the only one that's doing it twice. Uh, I think she's got a good shot at winning. What about you? So let's actually talk about those matches because we do have NXT deadline. So now we know, of course, who is going to be in the Iron Survivor Challenge matches. All the other matches that they have confirmed. One of them that they waited to confirm for some reason. One of them that I had like not anticipated whatsoever because I was like, why are they even doing this on the pre-show? But here's the current lineup. Very quick uh, rundown, and then we'll talk about each match. Well, the pre-show is going to be Axiom against Nathan Fraser. There's a steel cage match between Roxanne Perez and Keanu James. Carmelo Hayes against Lexus King. The men's and the women's Iron Survivor Challenge matches. The North American Championship match is not the match that was already confirmed before. Oh, God. Yeah. That's got a big change. And then the NXT Championship match between Ilya Dragon and Baron Corbin. First things first, Axiom versus Nathan Fraser. They had a match. I didn't even bother to watch anything that goes along with that. But then a bunch of people start brawling and Nikita Lyons is back. And then instead <laughs> of that meaning anything with Nikita Lyons, they're just like, do the match again between Axiom and Fraser on the pre-show. Why? Because Blair Davenport's in the match. She can't do singles match when she's in the Iron Survivor. All the more reason why that like doesn't make any sense. Maybe somebody else should have been a part. Maybe like, I don't know. But why even put Axiom and Fraser on this? Because they're trying to get you preconditioned again to pre-show matches. Uh, they should have just done like a tag title match. Or maybe Lyra Valkyria should have had a match on the card or something, you know? Uh, interesting that you note that. So let's talk about the QR code. Are you aware of this? There was a QR code on the announce desk. I was an idiot and thought, oh, it's probably just ticket information. When you scan it, it's uh, something that says, see you at deadline. And it's like buy tickets. Yeah. And then you hit a play button and it's Cora Jade's voice saying, see you at deadline. So Cora Jade's finally come back around. Where do you think she appears? That's interesting. Because my initial thought process behind this was Cora Jade appears and she goes after Roxanne Perez because I just naturally associate the two with each other but Roxanne's gonna go up against Kiana in a steel cage match and why the hell are they having a steel cage match because they can't stop fighting they've been fighting for like three weeks and, and it's every- just like okay put them in a steel cage because we want to have a cage because it's kind of interesting to have a cage you know what I, g- I gotta give them credit here because I think that's something missing from the main roster there isn't that like bro if I see you it's on site level of violence on the main roster that surprisingly nxt does a lot better that's because the main roster doesn't have the parking lot you know what even for some reason with with these two ava reigns also getting involved and is like this can't happen i'm gonna talk to Shawn michaels which make make, like what like why is she Shawn michaels's uh like assistant now when she was part of schism later with like uh with Alexis King and Carmel Hayes, where Carmel's like, hey, Ava, go tell Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? It's their means of being like, look, we got fucking zilch for this girl. 
but we don't want to fire her. So she's going to be Sean's assistant and just go with it, everybody, please. <laughs> That's pretty frosty, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a cold day in hell before I end up thinking that something else is going to um, yeah, but, I like I like the cage match. I think Roxanne like, should win. Cora like this. getting involved in that makes no sense though, because not only is it like, well, why would she go after Roxanne just for the fact that like they're friends and all that, but it's also a steel cage. So like, why would she get involved in a steel cage match? So I don't think it's going to happen there. So I think Nikita Lyons takes out Claire Davenport. Right, so the people in the Iron Survivor Challenge, for anybody who's wondering about that, just to give a you know a full breakdown of that, it's Blair Davenport, Fallon Henley, Kehlani Jordan, Lash Legend, and Tiffany Stratton. You're thinking Lions attacks Davenport, takes her out. I think like, they're just fighting backstage, and she gets removed from the match. So oh, and Cora days. replaces her. I'd be mad, because it's like, what a weird bait and switch. How did Cora know to just be sitting around? Well, Bates and the men's. I swear to God. <laughs> there's like, no, there's nobody named Switch there. There's scripts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know. There's Bates and scripts. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so dumb. I could see that being the case, though, because I also had put in ahead of time. I said, look, realistically, look. Lyra Valkyrie is not going to lose that title to Lola Vice. I don't think she's going to cash in the contract. At all? She probably missed it. Electra Lopez kind of threw out there that she could just cash in for a women's tag team title shot on the main roster. Huh. That'd be interesting. I, I wonder if that's the route she goes instead. They're doing something we were taking packs by the way, but we don't have to get into that right now. But it's she's around. She just like keeps popping up and stuff. Yeah. And then there was a split second where I'm always like, "Who was that?" And then it's like it's a fucking Tatum again. Like I keep I've done that to you twice now. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I keep. Tatum. And it's interesting because it's like I know who Tatum is. Like I've seen plenty of her matches. I think she's like one of the better looking women on the roster. So it's not even like I wouldn't pay attention to that either. And it's like it ends up just being like, "Who is that?" Oh fuck, it's Tatum. She like there's a split second where my brain does not compute when she has like her hair in a different fashion or something. I don't know. But, um, I like that they're doing something with her. I like Tatum. I like this idea about Blair Davenport TV and taking out though, because I'm like, Lola Vice isn't going to win that belt. She might not even do the cash in like you're saying now. And that's another thing, but Lyra needs heel challengers. And as far as I'm aware, maybe I missed it. They haven't said when the iron survivor challenge winner is going to get their title match. Right. They get to cash in, I believe. There's a lot of cash in ability. So it's like it could be like almost whenever they wanted. Right. Which the next pay per view is Vengeance Day, but they'll probably do New Year's Evil again. And it's look, it's not going to be Lash Legend. She's in the match for the sake of just like. Both matches have somebody in the match that don't really have much of a shot. Kalani Jordan, I don't think she would win the match anyway. And she's a babyface. Fallon Henley, whatever. Not going to be in uh, the winner of the match. And she's babyface, same thing. So it could be Davenport. My money would be on Tiffany Stratton. But I like this idea of Cora Jade popping up and doing that. Because I could see Cora Jade replacing Davenport and winning the match. And for that matter, I could see her potentially even beating Lyra. I think she's overdue. She's overdue for anything on the NXT roster. She's overdue to go to the main roster at this point. Like she's been gone for so long. It's been like what since August. August, August? yeah. Like she's been gone so long. The woman who beat her and sent her away no longer works for the company. Was it Dana? Dana, yeah. <laughs> so uh, at least right now I'm going Tiffany Stratton winning this but I like this Cora Jade idea What's your I'm going to go Cora Jade and if not Cora Jade I'm going to go Blair Davenport hmm. 
Now the Axiom and Nathan Frazier match. You think anything interesting is happening with that, or Nathan is it just Frazier should just win? They do flippy flippy, and then yeah. <laughs> They, they do flippy flippy. They do flippy flippy good. Put a mask on Fraser and make him a tag team. No, he's a good looking guy. You don't need to put a mask on. Yeah, he wants to be the Flash for some reason. Don't Just don't make him Nathan Flasher because then that's like Naked Midian. <laughs> that's some hard hitting home truth, huh? <laughs> How hard is your home hitting truth? <laughs> little bit more now that I'm watching this match. It's like, uh, Keanu James versus Roxanne Perez. <laughs> Who do you think's winning that? Jeez. <laughs> it's because it's a steel like cage. Get your mind out of the gutter. Come on. That's a lot of hard like steel right there. Month in a row. Roxanne needs to win and then go to the goddamn main roster. Yeah. I think that's the case. Unless there's some kind of weird idea with the steel cage. I think Roxanne's beating Keanu. Now, Hayes and Lexus King. Lexus King will win. Lexus King is going to win that. Hayes needs to continue to lose so he can continue to be like, woe is me, and eventually turn heel, of course. I think it's pretty straightforward. Ilya Dragunov beats Baron Corbin. I want Baron Corbin to win. I want Baron Corbin to win. Uh, I want him to win so bad. He deserves yeah. something. Yeah, I want him to win, but I don't bet on that whatsoever. Yeah, Ilya wins. Whoa. Or does he? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Baron Corbin no wins. <laughs> I just, uh, Dragon is going to hold that belt until at least stand and deliver, I think. Um. Then who beats him for a trick? They're really pushing trick. Well, I don't think that trick is going to win the Iron Survivor Challenge. So the other people in the match, Trick Williams is joined by Die Jack, Braun Breaker, Josh Briggs, and Tyler Bate. Briggs is in the Lash Legend role, I think, where it's like, yeah, throw somebody out there that you wouldn't necessarily anticipate. Now I like Josh Briggs a lot. I actually think he's got a future to be a potential world champion, but right now he's not in the position that like, yeah, he's not winning that. It'd be kind of cool if he did, but I don't think he's winning it. Yeah. I'd be all for it. I think it's going to be Brown breaker. I hope not. For the same reason as Roxanne, just Go to the main roster, please. He really should. And that's why I think that he wins this. They do the match at NXT Vengeance Day. Or, well, I think if if the match is supposed to be for Vengeance Day, I think it's Braun Breaker. And then I think at that point, he pretty much moves up to the main roster around WrestleMania. But there's a chance that they could go with like Tyler Bate. And they could just have Tyler Bade versus Ilya Dragunov on NXT New Year's Evil, and then they move on to something else, you know? Yeah. I'm going to go with... Maybe Trick finally does just win. Because they're pushing him so hard. You know what? I take that back. Die Jack. See, I think Dijak wins. has almost no chance. I think Dijak wins. Huh. I'd be Dijak, cool with it. Dijak New Year's Evil. Some kind of gimmick match, maybe? Dude, it's been five years. But you remember that match he had in Portland with Keith Lee? It was five years ago in February. That Keith Lee uh, Dijak feud was great. Or. Or was it four years? Because it was right before COVID. It was Portland, so no, four years. But like that, we need that die, Jack. And I think it's at least a different pick than Braun Breaker again, Trick Williams again. Well, die, Jack had his whole feud with Dragunov. Yeah, but it wasn't for the title. Yeah. The most interesting it. pick to me would be Briggs. I'd be alright with Briggs and Handley taking it. 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, do something different. Why not? But here's the real confusing thing that happens on this. Dominic Mysterio is going to defend the North American Championship against not Wes Lee, who has a back injury and is going to be out eight to 12 months. Yep. So they just slotted Dragon Lee in there, or as you should probably pronounce it, Dragon Lee. (laughs) 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 Is this, is this fucking title not cursed? No, not as much as other titles. Think about it though. The whole Mustafa Ali thing and Dragon Lee oh, right. and Wesley. Anybody named Lee that's involved in this, it's not working out for them. We've seen Dragon Lee against Dominic Mysterio for this title like three times or something. And it's like Wesley losing the belt, having all these matches, coming back, hitting an injury, doing all this. That's like five ways of f- fucked up. Mustafa Ali was like supposed to get his championship and then that ended up being like yeah he got fired before he had his title match so let's throw dragon lee in there and do that kind of thing even though we just did it on monday night raw at this point i'm like do they fucking give him the belt did they just give it to dragon lee they might give him the belt but then i'm like well they probably weren't planning on doing that so they probably just keep it on dominic mysterio and i'm thinking that this is what happens Dragon Lee beats Santos Escobar on SmackDown tonight. Because now it's 12.04. So now it's past midnight where yeah, we're talking about Friday. I think Dragon Lee beats Escobar because Escobar beat Dragon Lee. And Carlito, follow this house of cards, Carlito interferes to cost Santos to compensate for the fact that Santos had screwed over Carlito and Dragon Lee gets a win over Santos. And then at the pay-per-view here, Santos interferes to screw over Dragon Lee for beating him on Friday. And he had already said that Dominic was right about Ray, which sets up Dominic and Santos in a tag match at some point against Dragon Lee and Carlito. In the meantime, <clears throat> Dom is still North American champion. You had a match at the pay-per-view. Dragon Lee loses, but he doesn't really lose in a way that kind of makes it seem like he sucks because Santos interfered. And then they just kind of fucking move on. They try to figure out yet again, what else do we do with this championship? (laughs) And I don't have any fucking clue who ends up doing this because right now we got a Raw superstar holding the title, a SmackDown superstar fighting for it, and it's an NXT title. First of all, Santos is winning. Because Dominic Mysterio cost Dragon Lee the match to give them some kind of heat going into um, the pay per view. It also plays into the fact that Rey Mysterio is going to be with Dragon Lee at this pay per view. And um, yeah, obviously Santos took out Rey. So I think Santos is winning. And then uh, Dragon Lee could win. Like, look, if they're just, if they had decided, hey, Dom's losing, yeah, Dragon Lee could win here. It's not out of the question, and I don't know what they're doing. I don't even think that they know necessarily. I think they're still trying to figure it out. Weird pay per view, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's not even including the idea that like the Iron Survivor Challenge matches are like impossible to keep up with because it's always just like, did that person get pinned? Do they have thirty seconds or ninety seconds or a hundred seconds? Or did they get a they got a number, they got a pin, they got a submission, they did whatever. Oh, this person's coming out. It's not my favorite match, I'll say that. Oh, it should be a fun show though. Oh, of course we'll be checking it out. And there will be live coverage on sparkoutmoment.com for the pay-per-view and immediately following afterward, the pay-per-view point post-show. So make sure that you subscribe here. Make sure that you ring your little notification bell and you get those email alerts set up for when we do go live because I'll try to go live pretty much as soon as the pay-per-view ends. But, you know, it might be another minute or two or something. And you might not even necessarily remember that that's the case. 
Although you should tie a string around your finger or set up a phone alert or whatever it is that you do. I don't know. I always thought that the tie a string around your finger thing was really dumb because you could be like, ah, oh, this reminds me that I was supposed to remember about something, but I don't remember what it is. All I remember is I have a fucking string on my finger. But I thought it was just supposed to be like you're a puppet. <laughs> like, you know, like pull the string. Why, why would you tie a string around your finger to remember something? I don't know, but people in the past are stupid. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Boy, this is a scatterbrained hot tags. So welcome back. They used to uh they used to smoke and think that it was like good for you. I don't trust anything I mean, those people do. You know, the more and more time goes on, the more and more it makes sense why um the that generation is so bitter and awful these days, and it's like, yeah, well you used to have lead paint all over the place. Yeah, and your doctor used to come into the room. So here's the deal. You got throat cancer. Don't mind me. I'm going to light up the cigarette. Right, yeah. (laughs) But everybody knows that uh, my preferred brand of cigarette is a rich and smooth, mild taste. And that one cures that. (laughs) Winston tastes good like a cigarette. Look, I'll put it this way. On the one side of my family, almost everybody died of heart disease. And that's the side of the family that used to love cooking with lard and Crisco. All right, look. Wonder what happened. <laughs> Can't argue with flavor, Tony. I mean, butter's great. It is. It's going to be the death of me. Absolutely. And you see it coming because... Well, I would say that, but there's like eight other ways that could be the death of me. I had a whole discussion the other day about the whole uh, put a bullet in the gun... <laughs> Yeah, like I. That's not a suicide thing, by the way, or anybody. That was like, if anybody would want to shoot me. If, if other people are putting bullets in the gun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we had that conversation just the other day. Just because I want to load someone. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when we record at midnight. It's, and when it's I'm... a good time, though. It's a good time. Yeah. Hopefully, you by, did by, have a good way, time. By the way, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, us seeing each other, it was basically this. Yeah. For the person. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Should have put a live uh, feed up on there. Everybody would have been like, oh, it's an all talk show episode. It's the dark cast. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we did. <laughs> Obviously, if you like that, take advantage of the dark cast here. Look at that. Look at that plug. Members only episodes you can only get if you have joined the YouTube channel membership or the Patreon. I prefer the YouTube channel membership myself because you get the video portion if we do anything that's video related, but hey, whatever you prefer, or if you want to do both, that's awesome. That makes you an even better person. And in this world, you got to do as many things as you can to be a better person because you don't know what happens when you die. And uh, God's watching. So, wow, that got really, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I'm guilt tripping everybody. Donate to the page. <laughs> right, motherfucker. Make sure that you pay attention to things like the Fantasy League, because we're obviously going to get some points for this pay-per-view thing, although it's not going to be in the same regard with like the predictions, because Callum doesn't uh, factor in the NXT stuff quite the same. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. I don't want the Dark Kiss thing to be up here. I want the Hot Tags thing to be up. There we go. And uh, I also want the DC Marvel thing up. Remember, everybody, click on that if you didn't already. Blueprint. You find that Blueprint project over on fanboysanonymous.com. Go ahead and check that out. Like, share, favorite, follow, subscribe. All that good stuff for that blue brand and everything else you can find under amangotree.com in the link tree over there, including my stuff at Tony Mango. And of course, you know where to find Rob. Yep, find me everywhere at Dude Felice. Um, you can find him on know, Facebook, on Twitter, Facebook, on Twitter, Grindr. Instagram, not... <laughs> Not dudefleece.com yet, but it's coming. Um, yeah, you know what to do. Find me everywhere. Find me on Fightful. Uh, taking a hiatus from WrestleZone for the foreseeable future. But always love to that team. And yeah, you can check out my work elsewhere. So NXT Deadline is the next time you're going to be hearing from us on Saturday. Hopefully you enjoy your Friday. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your Saturday or the rest of whatever day you're listening to this. If you're listening to this three years down the line, hopefully you've enjoyed NXT deadline and stuff. And hopefully the world is not ending at this point. But if it is, I'm glad you're sticking around and listening to this instead of, I don't know, doing something else in that bunker that you got. But we love you. 
we love you for listening. We love you for uh, checking us out. And we will see you next time. This has been another Smart Out moment. And we are being counted out.